Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Hercules. The greatest hero of Greece was Hercules. He was the strongest man on earth and he had the supreme self-confidence, magnificent physical strength gifts. Throughout his life, Hercules had this perfect confidence that no matter, no matter who was against him, he could never be defeated, and facts bore him out. Whenever he fought with anyone, the issue was certain beforehand. He could be overcome only by a supernatural force. Hera used hers against him with terrible effect and in the end, he was killed by magic. But nothing that lived in the air, sea, or on land ever defeated him. He was born in Thebes, and for a long time, he was held to be the son of Amphitryon, a distinguished general. But in reality, he was the son of Zeus, who had visited Amphitryon's wife, Alcmena in the shape of her husband when the general was away fighting. She bore two children, Hercules to Zeus and Iphicles to Amphitryon. The difference in the body's descent was clearly shown in the way each acted in the face of a great danger which came to them before they were a year old. Hera, as always, was furiously jealous, and he, she determined to kill Hercules. One evening, when all was silent in the house, two great snakes came crawling into the nursery. There was a light in the room, and as the two read up above the creek, with waving heads and flickering tongues, the children woke, if cause squint and try to get out of bed, but Hercules sat up and grasped the deadly creatures by the throat. They turned and twisted and wound the coils around his body, but he held them fast. The mother heard if cause screams and calling to her husband rushed to the nursery. They set Hercules laughing, in each hand a long limp body. He gave them gleefully to Ephigen. They were dead. When Hercules grew up, the grateful citizens gave, gave him as a reward the hand of the princess Megara. He was devoted to her and to their children, and yet this marriage brought upon him the greatest sorrow of his life, as well as trials and dangerous such as no one ever went through, before or after. When Megara had from him three sounds he went mad. Hera, who never forgot a wrong sent the madness upon him. He killed his children and Megara too. As she tried to protect the youngest, then his sanity returned. He found himself in his blood stand hole. The dead bodies of his sons and his wife beside him. He had no idea what had happened, how they had been killed. The Athenians agreed and welcomed the poor hero, but he himself could not understand such ideas. He could not think the thing out at all. He could only feel he had killed his family. Therefore, he was defiled and a defiler of others. He deserved that all should turn from him with nothing. 
and at Delphi, where he went to consult the oracle. The praetors, looking at looking at the matter, just as he did, he needed to be purified. She taught him, and only a terrible penance could do that. She bade him go to his cousin Eurystheus, king of Mycenae, and submit to whatever he demanded of him. He went willing, ready to do anything that could make him clean again. Eurystheus was by no means stupid, but of a very ingenious turn of mind. And when the strongest man on earth came to him, humbly prepared to be his slave, he devised a series of penances which, from the point of view of difficulty and danger, could not have been improved upon. It must be said, however, that he was helped and urged on by Hera, till the end of her close life she never forgave him for being Zeus's son. The tasks Eurystheus gave him to do are called the labors of Hercules. There were twelve of them, and each one was all but impossible. The first was to kill the lion of Nemea, a beast no weapons could wound. That difficulty Hercules solved by choking the life out of him. Then he heaved the huge carcass up on his back and carried it into Mycenae. After that, Eurystheus, a cautious man, would not let him inside the city. He gave him his orders from afar. The second labor was to go to Lerna and kill a creature with nine heads called the Hydra, which lived in a swamp there. This was exceedingly hard to do because one of the heads was immortal and the others almost as bad. And as much as when Hercules chopped off one, two grew up instead. However, he was helped by his nephew Aulus, who brought him a burning brand. With which he seared the neck as he cut each head off, so that it could not sprout again. When all had been chopped off, he disposed of the one that was immortal by burying it securely under a great rock. The third labor was to bring back alive a stag with horns of gold, sacred to Artemis, which lived in the forests of Cernetia. He could have killed it easily. But to take it alive was another matter, and he hunted it a whole year before he succeeded. The fourth labor was to capture a great boar which had its lair on Mount Eurymenphus. He chased the beast from one place to another until it was exhausted. Then he drove it into deep snow and trapped it. The fifth labor was to clean the Augean stables in a single day. Augeans had thousands of cattle, and their stalls had not been cleared out of for years. Hercules diverted the courses of two rivers and made them flow through the stables in a great flood that washed out the filth in no time at all. The sixth labor was to drive away the Stymphalian birds, which were a plague to the people of Stymphalus because of their enormous numbers. He was helped by Athena to drive them out of their coverts, and as they flew up, he shot them. The seventh labor was to go to Crete. And fetch from there the beautiful savage bull that Poseidon had given Minos. Hercules mastered him, put him in a boat, and brought him to Eurystheus. The eighth labor was to get the man-eating mares of King Diomedes of Thrace. Hercules slew Diomedes first, and then drove off the mares on a post. The ninth labor was to bring back the girdle of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons. When Hercules arrived, she met him kindly and told him she would give him the girdle. But Hera stirred up trouble. She made the Amazons think that Hercules was going to carry off their queen, and they charged down on his ship. Hercules, without a thought of how kind Hippolyta had been, without any thought at all, instantly killed her, taking it for granted that she was responsible for the attack. He was able to fight off the others and get away with the girdle. The tenth labor was to bring back the cattle of Geryon, who was a monster with three bodies living on Erivia, a western island. On his way, there Hercules reached the land at the end of the Mediterranean, and he set up as a memorial of his journey two great rocks, called the Pillar of Hercules, now Gibraltar and Ceuta. Then he got the oxen and took them to Mycenae. The eleventh labor was the most difficult of all so far. 
it was to bring back the golden apples of the Hesperides, and he did not know where they were to be found. Alas, who bore the vow of heaven upon his shoulders, was the father of the Hesperides. So Hercules went to him and asked him to get the apples for him. He offered to take upon himself the burden of the sky while Alas was away. Alas, seeing a chance of being relieved forever from his heavy task, gladly agreed. He came back with the apples, but he did not give them to Hercules. He told Hercules he could keep on holding up the sky, for Alas himself would take the apples to Eurypheus. On this occasion, Hercules had only his wits to trust to. He had to give all his strength to supporting that mighty load. He was successful, but because of Alas's stupidity rather than his own cleverness, he agreed to Alas's plan, but asked him to take the sky back for just a moment so that Hercules could put a pad on his shoulders to ease the pressure. Alas did so, and Hercules picked up the apples and went off. The twelfth labor was the worst of all. It took him down to the lower world, and it was then that he freed Theseus from the chair of forgetfulness. His task was to bring Cerberus, the three-headed dog, up from Hades. Pluto gave him perm permission, provided Hercules used no weapons to overcome him. He could use his hands only. Even so, he forced the terrible monster to submit to him. He lifted him and carried him all the way up to the earth and on to Mycenae. Eurypheus very sensibly did not want to keep him, and made Hercules carry him back. This was his last labor.